Objects are an important part of contemporary coding, and they're a, they're a way of coding as much as they are a feature of coding. Uh, I'm not going to lie to you guys, when you first get started with them, it's going to seem like a lot of extra work to do exactly the same thing you were doing before, but the deeper you get into using objects, you're, the more you're going to see that it makes your code portable and reusable and easier to maintain. Um, in order, to, The best way to understand uh, what an object is is that it's a data structure that combines variables and functions into kind of a, a reusable unit or, or a, a something that kind of uh, keeps track of information and then gives you a set of methods for working on that information. That's really what an object is. Okay, And the way that we actually define an object is through a class. So a class is what defines an object. In, in processing, when we talk about an object, we're actually talking about a, a specific instance, a specific use of a class uh, in, a, in a specific case, basically. So classes define objects. You need to understand that relationship, basically. Um, so if we were to think about our circles that we've been working with and we wanted to actually define a class that allowed us to create a moving circle on the screen. There's a couple different pieces of information that we would want to keep track of and a few different actions that we would want to actually perform on that action, on that information. Uh, first off, we obviously need to know where it is on the screen. We need to know its X and Y position. Okay, uh, We want to know where it's moving on the screen and we need to actually keep track of that motion in two directions, the X direction and the Y direction. That's what's going to give us the, the ability to do diagonal movement. Um, we obviously want to draw it on the screen, otherwise we're not going to be able to see it. Um, but we'll probably want to separate that from actually working with the position, actually doing the math on this these position and speed information in order to update the position on the screen. Uh, it's actually useful to actually separate that from act from the action of drawing it on the screen because you can perform those at different times. Uh, and I'm sure there's some other actions we're going to see as we get into this, but let's actually start to dive into the code and actually define a class for a moving circle. Most of the code you see here on the screen already should make sense to you. It's just a basic draw circle on the screen. You got a white circle and a black background. So let's actually uh, start to introduce the class structure. So we'll create a class called moving circle because that's what our, our goal is. Uh, we want a descriptive class name. And let's add in the variables that we talked about, both the x position, the y position, the x speed, and the y speed. Now these four variables are just going to uh, exist within the moving circle. The first two for position, the second two for the speed, and in the two different directions on the x-axis and y-axis. We also need what's called a constructor. And the constructor is going to have the same name as the class itself. Um, Inside this constructor is where we'll actually set up the initial values for these variables. So go ahead and type in x position and y position and give them a, a default value here is what I'm going to do. And then I'll do the same thing for speed, uh, both the x speed and the y speed. Uh, and this gives them initial values. We also need that initial uh, method that we talked about, the drawing on screen. Um, we're going to go ahead and define that. And since we already have some um, commands for drawing on screen, I'm going to go ahead and just copy and paste those down here into the new draw on screen command. But instead of using 100, I'm going to use actually the, the variables that we've defined for our class. So these two functions, these two methods get actually called when we call the draw on screen method now. So now we have to actually use the class, okay, now that we've defined it. So the first thing we do is declare it up here in the global section of our code. Uh, in the setup, we want to actually call the constructor. That's this new moving circle. That's going to set up the default values for our moving circle object, uh, which is the one that we've defined up here in the global section uh, with the name 1. Uh, O N E, okay. And then down here, that's going to give us the ability to go ahead and just call one dot draw on screen. Uh, and that is actually calling that those two lines of code that we defined down here in this draw on screen block, okay. So if we run this now, it should look the same as our code did before, our, our output sketch, okay. So now that we've done this, uh, we actually can uh, use this, instead of sticking with 100 all the time, we can actually set some default values here using our constructor, and we can just set whatever input values we want here within the parentheses, um, give them some names, and if we now replace those names where we had 100, we can pass in values. So at the time where our constructor gets called in the setup function, that's now where we're going to set 100 and 100. So if you hit it play again, you'll see that it's still in the same position, but it's because we're passing these 100 values here. Uh, if we want to move them to a different location, all we have to actually do is change it at the time the constructor is called, and that actually moves where the circle is on the screen. So that's moving it by position, but what if we want to get the speed function working? That's the, going to be the key to actually getting an animated uh, 
circle here. Uh, we're going to need to first define that uh, function that we talked about where uh, we update position and, and perform some mathematical operations on the position and speed to combine them. And the math is actually pretty simple. We just simply take the position and we add in the speed, both for the x dimension and the y dimension. That's what's going to give us the sense of motion that we need that we want to create. Uh, and then we want to continuously call that function on a regular basis. Uh, that's what we're going to do right before the draw on screen. We're going to call this update position. Now, at first you're not going to see anything because that's uh, because the speed values are actually set to zero. If we change them to something like two, what we're doing is we're actually adding in two pixels right here into the position every time that the update position is called. And because the update position is called every time the draw block of code is called, we're adding two pixels to the position every time the, ref the screen is refreshed. And that's what's going to give us the sense of motion. You see the circle now moves down and to the right on the screen. If we change the value on these speeds, we actually can change the direction that the, the circle moves in. So down and to the left, up and to the left. Uh, and then if we change uh, the sign again, we can get it to move up and to the right. Uh, and back to our original position, if we do positive and positive values, it moves down and to the right. Okay, uh, So that's moving on its own, but the just with just kind of an automatic animation effect, but if we want to actually connect these with keystrokes, we'll change it back to a zero value. And I'm going to cheat by uh, pasting in some pre existing code here one for increasing the speed by one, one for decreasing the speed by one, one for increasing the y speed by one, and then the y speed by decreasing it by one. Uh, and these functions can now be called using our key pressed block of code. If you remember from before, when we were looking at specific keys, we can now associate these functions that we've created associated in the moving circle class, uh, associate them with specific keys on the keyboard. So all we're doing is if the key equals uh, A, we're going to decrease the X speed, D, we're going to increase the X speed, W decrease the Y speed and X increase the Y speed. And what's going to happen is each time you press these keys, it's going to change that value by one. And so now as I press keys on the keyboard, I get this uh, motion effect that I'm able to control. I can just keep tapping the keys to increase the speed, um, or I can tap the key in the other direction to decrease the speed. Uh, and so I get a nice controlled set of movement here that I'm able to move the circle around the screen in whatever pattern I, I, I find uh, useful at the given time, which is going to be great for uh, other applications as we move forward. At the beginning I mentioned that part of the power of objects was reusing your code and we can see this pretty quickly if we actually go back to this code and instead of having one moving circle we wanted two. We just first declare the second one and then we call its constructor again and maybe we'll put it in a little bit different place now 100 and 100 instead of in the middle of the screen uh, and then we can simply call uh, our update methods again in the draw routine uh, and quickly uh, duplicate the code here for the uh, different keystrokes to uh, increase or decrease the, the, the speed in the various directions. Uh, and of course, everywhere we have uh, one in the, this code that I just copied and pasted, I'm going to have to type in a two. And I'm doing this quickly, but you can slow it down and play this back. But you see how quickly I get now two moving circles. And it's not much of a stretch to imagine that I can then have Two, three moving circles and four moving circles. Uh, that's really where the power of object-oriented programming is is, 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 is taking your functionality, defining it once, and then having that propagate through multiple objects.